For those who don't know the town, Steel River might sound like a strange name, but Middlesbrough grew from the south side of the banks of the River Tees, and its history is steeped in the steel industry. But in 1801, Middlesbrough was a farming hamlet with a population of just 25, living in four farmhouses. But by the mid-1990s, parts of Middlesbrough were blighted by social deprivation and car crime was at an all-time high. Middlesbrough has ridden a roller coaster of success and decline. Unfortunately, we don't have much to remind us of Middlesbrough's proud history. So we'd like to take you on a brief tour of the town by looking at the last remnants of our industrial heritage, by visiting some of our iconic sites and buildings, and also by taking a look at some of our more recent additions. <laughs> It's sad that with over 200 years of history behind us, we don't have many landmarks to our once proud heritage. In fact, one of our earliest claims to fame isn't even a building, it's a man. This granite vase is the site of the birthplace of Captain James Cook, who is known worldwide as an explorer, navigator and cartographer. This small monument is sited just a short distance from a museum dedicated to Captain Cook. Captain Cook left Middlesbrough at an early age in the mid-1700s. Cook made detailed maps of Newfoundland prior to making three voyages to the Pacific, during which he achieved the first recorded European contact with the eastern coastline of Australia and the Hawaiian Islands, and the first recorded circumnavigation of New Zealand. Our tour of iconic structures starts with Acklam Hall. It was built by William Hustler in 1678 and it continued to house the Hustler family until they conceded ownership to Middlesbrough Council in 1928. One of the town's two Grade 1 listed building, it has been in public ownership since 1935 and has been used as a grammar school and a comprehensive school. It's now owned by Middlesbrough College and Middlesbrough Council and current plans are to sell off the land for housing development and to convert the hall into a spa facility. The town started to grow through the development of the docks which served the coal mines of Durham, transporting their goods by ship. This was the centre of the town, close to the river, which was crucial to the town's development. The Custom House was originally built in 1836 and offered public exchange rooms for merchants and businessmen to meet. Although the frontage still remains intact, it was converted much more recently to provide youth facilities. On the other side of the town, the Penniman family had begun to acquire land in the 1600s, but it wasn't until the mid-18th century that they built Ormsby Hall, a Palladium mansion. It remained in the Penniman family until 1983 when it was taken over by the National Trust. Both the main house and the stable block are Grade 1 listed buildings, but it's not until you visit the hall that you find a huge expanse of open space so close to the centre of the town. In 1850, iron ore was discovered in the Cleveland Hills close to Eston to the south of the town, and iron gradually replaced coal as the lifeblood of Middlesbrough. The following year, Henry Bolko and John Vaughan opened Teesside's first blast furnace. And by 1873, we were producing two million tonnes of pig iron per year. Bolko became Middlesbrough's first mayor in 1853 when the town was incorporated. He was the first to raise the idea of a public park and he gifted the land himself and Albert Park opened in 1868. 100 acres of open space, the park is home to a Grade 2 listed sundial. The park is also home to a statue of one of our famous sporting sons, Brian Clough.
The growth of Middlesbrough was dramatic and soon became known by its nickname, Ionopolis. And we were visited in 1862 by the Victorian Prime Minister, Gladstone, who said, This remarkable place, the youngest child of England's enterprise, is an infant, but if an infant, an infant Hercules. This is Exchange Place. Built predominantly as offices, it's a Grade 2 listed building. And it is yet another testament to the growth of the town as an industrial centre. This is the ever imposing Middlesbrough Town Hall. It was built between 1883 and 1889 at a cost of £130,000 and it's yet another Grade 2 listed building. As well as offices and conference rooms, it contained a courtroom and a sizeable theatre. The basement crypt below the main theatre also serves as a concert hall. One of the more popular sites on the town's landscape is the Dorman Museum. It's been in existence for 110 years and was built in 1904 as a memorial to George Lockwood Dorman and others of the Yorkshire Regiment who lost their lives in the South African Wars of 1899 to 1902. Middlesbrough Transporter Bridge is probably the best known image of the town. It was built in 1911 and is an aerial transfer bridge and is one of only two of its kind in the UK, the second being in Newport in Wales. A gondola is slung from a tall span to carry passengers and vehicles across the River Tees. The transporter reinforces the image of the town as a steel producer. Over the years, expertise in steel from Teesside has been used in many landmark bridges, including the Sydney Harbour Bridge in Australia and the Bosphorus Bridge in Turkey. When we talked about Captain Cook earlier, we didn't mention that the site of his memorial and museum is actually in Stewart Park, Middlesbrough's largest park at 120 acres. Henry Bulko first landscaped the area when he built Martin Hall on the site in 1858. Martin Hall became derelict in the 1950s and the council were in the process of demolishing the building in 1960 when it was ravaged by fire. The park was eventually bought in 1924 by Thomas Dorman Stewart for the people of Middlesbrough and it was officially opened in 1928. Middlesbrough's Central Library was a gift from Scottish-American businessman and philanthropist Andrew Carnegie. He gifted over 2,500 libraries to the United States, Britain, Ireland and other countries around the world. The library has been an imposing focal point in the town centre since 1929. Tesaurus Park is a 10-acre recreational area and sculpture park built in the Riverside Light Industrial Estate on the bank of the River Tees. It was built on a former slag heap in what was the Ironmasters district and represents, without any irony, the iron and steel industry that used to exist on the site and in the area. The town includes England's only sculpture by Klaus Oldenburg, the Bottle of Notes of 1993. This brings us on a circular route from Cook's birthplace in the 1700s to a modern Middlesbrough today. The Bottle of Notes is sited in the town's central gardens right next to one of our newer buildings, the Middlesbrough Institute of Modern Art. 
A contemporary art gallery, MIMA was formally launched in January 2007. There are mixed feelings locally, with some residents thinking that the glass box is overpriced at £20 million and half a million pounds in running costs. We now get to visit the Riverside Stadium, home of our football team. Some residents still say it's not a patch on our old ground at Ayrson Park, but we do have the original gates from Ayrson. The stadium is also a sad testament to the decline of the steel industry around the town, because when the stadium was built in 1995, the steel didn't come from Teesside, it came from Germany. Just a short distance from the riverside is the town's latest monument to our industrial heritage. This is Temenos. Designed by Anish Kapoor, it's a £2.7 million landmark on the Tees. It was the first of what was supposed to be a series of five sculptures across the Tees Valley, with a total cost of £15 million. But in 2012, the project was put on hold, so this was the only one ever built. So, does this mark the end of Middlesbrough's association with steel? And could this be the last landmark that Middlesbrough might ever have? <laughs>